great to see you again. And, um, you know, we always hear a lot about uh, free radicals, free radical damage, uh, oxidative stress, but we don't really know really what what this does, how, what this looks like actually. And I think that's what we're going to do today. We're going to see basically what you do in your practice um, <laughs> that you just won't get with a regular uh, MD physician. You know, you take, you, you actually look at people's blood samples, their live blood on the spot, and you, you see exactly what's going on with the blood cells and, and the uh, incredible free radical damage that a lot of people are just walking around with. And um, how this, basically, what is it? Is it uh, if you have over 50% free radical damage, you won't live for more than a couple of months. And this is basically what happens over the course of time with disease. Is that be correct? Yeah. Yeah, Alex, you know, I've been doing um, this oxidative stress uh, and uh, blood morphology test for about 40 years. I'm going to show you right directly into the microscope um, a uh, drop of blood. Can you, can you see this screen? Yes. Yes. Okay. That is healthy blood. That's my blood. But that's dried. It's not live. Right. Now I'm going to screen over. Hold on. I'm going to screen over to a person with stage four cancer days before they die. Whoa, Can you see the difference? Oh yeah, it's all it um it clo it's clotting or something. It's gluing well, together. Do you see the big white holes? Yes. Okay, those big white holes are free radical damage. It's it's a it's it, the the empty space is not empty space. It's what's called polymerized protein. There's oh. broken down tissue pouring into the general bloodstream and every drop of this person's blood has these big gaps or holes and it's it's a toxin that's where antioxidants come in you have to give the body unpaired electrons particularly from hydrogen to fill in those gaps or those holes and that gives the body a chance to repair if there's not enough selective antioxidants then the body starts to deter deteriorate. Now you could randomly give them a lot of vitamin A and C, but those are uh, high in uh, uh, antioxidants, but they're not selective. They sometimes reduce good, there is such a thing as good uh, free radical uh, stress, like from exercise, and then there's bad free radical damage, like from cancer or diabetes or some chronic you know, neurological disorder. Virtually every disease is related to both inflammation and free radical damage. The two go hand in hand, yes. okay? So if you have asthma, you have a lung problem, the cause could be a delayed food allergy, some problem with the immune system that it's, it's automatically fighting itself, or coronary heart disease, there's not enough oxygen in the arteries of the heart, chronic peptide ulcers, you know, there's tissue damage in the gut, or tuberculosis in the lungs, or rheumatoid arthritis, that causes massive inflammation. But the origin of, of rheumatoid arthritis could be poor diet, it could be lack of exercise, it could be drugs, it could be um, various things that, that could be a genetic factor that you're predisposed, but it's not the cause. Or it could be have, you have ulcerative colitis or Crohn's disease, so even chronic hepatitis. So inflammation has many different origins. So what I want to talk about is what's called electron or radical electrons start unpairing. So electrons like to travel in a pair together in, in every cell of your body. Every molecule has to have this outer pair of electrons. But when one splits off, it, it causes a distortion or like a warping where one cell kills the next, kills the next. That's oxidative stress. That's horrible. That's free radical damage. This device is the PEMF, Pulse Electromagnetic Frequency. So while I'm on a cell phone or exposed to the radiation from the screen, um, it, it's, uh, what would I say? It, it, it's causing um, free radical damage. It's causing damage to my tissues. So I'm using the PEMF to send a current because the heart has a high electromagnetic frequency. And tissues that develop cancer have a low electromagnetic frequency. So I want to donate these frequencies to protect my body. It seems extreme, the things I do. But I, don't, I think it's more extreme to have to undergo chemotherapy and radiation and surgery and uh, be told you have a diagnosis that you have no control over. To me, that's way far more extreme than I want to ever face. You're right. It's like pay now or pay later. And, and you know, it's not, not that costly. I mean, it's an investment in your health. I mean, what's it take to buy you know, a bunch of fruits and vegetables 
what's it take to go for an exercise you know every morning and night at very least chemo and radiation is going to cause the body to decline it's going to be an onslaught that if you're lucky to even survive the treatment right our medical profession is doing them a disservice to tell them there's a five-year or a ten-year cure rate the only people I've seen survive this and as a guide, I've been doing this for 40 years in Hope for Cancer and other clinics and facilities where they can talk openly. Here in the U.S., you have to talk about, hey, I don't treat cancer. And, and, and I have to say this openly right now. I don't treat cancer. But we treat the immune system. We help the body to build up, to get so strong that the body has a chance to survive, if that makes sense. Yeah, of course. So you and I as a guide can only guide these people in the right direction and serve as a good example uh, serve as a mentor, supply them education material, give them tests and quizzes. You have a great hormone quiz at your website, uh, Detox Estrogen. Everyone should take that test. Everyone should do the 24 urine test. Everyone should get armed with the information of how healthy are they really. Because if a person says, I'm healthy, what does that mean? Are they on medications? Are they exercising? Are they getting quality sleep? Are they have quality love? Can they get an erection? I mean, how do you measure health? You've got to look at all these things, yeah. don't you? Yeah, absolutely. So, so you and I, as loving beings that came into this world, hopefully we have a mission and a purpose. And my mission and purpose is to share the truth with people and tell people that your doctor is as human as you are. Just because they're wearing a white coat and a stethoscope, it doesn't mean their diagnosis has to be your terminal decision that you're gonna check out and you must do chemo and radiation, otherwise you'll die. That's their close call. They'll say $500,000 worth of insurance money and it's gonna cost you to go through these treatments. I have several friends recently who've undergone chemo and radiation. Isn't that right, half a million to a million dollars in treatment for a year or two of treatment? Yes. Don't you think and, our, and, well, our they're country? They're not allowed really to prescribe anything else. Their hands are right. Tied. They they would be put in jail right. if they said what I'm telling you on the show. I, I I'm a little scared about the things I'm saying, so I have to always preface. I'm I'm an ordained minister. I'm telling you what I would say um, based on my freedom of religion, and I'm not giving medical advice. I'm giving you clear, concise guidance. I'm your guide. I'm like that person that's going to guide you step by step to the next step to, to wellness. Mm -hmm. It's incredible that it has to be like that, but uh, <laughs> it, it's also true, so whatever, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So uh, when I look at either my friend or a client, and I've tested literally tens of thousands of people over the last 40 years, um, I've seen the greatest outcomes of individuals, but I've also followed their careers, some of these famous people, and they fall fallen prey to, you know, the typical latest fad of what, whatever's going on. And instead of staying to the core of the foundation of health, these, these simple uh, basic five steps that we teach, you know, what do, we, what do we have to do to get people to wake up and go, let's, let's choose a different route. What we've been doing in healthcare and medical care has not been working kind of step back from this old disease model and look at a wellness model. You realize in psychology, they in abnormal psychology, Freud used to study schizophrenia and psychosis and seriously deranged people. And so he had this model of mental health as dealing with crazy people. But then Maslow was studying well people and successful people and happy people. He had a completely different model. Let's now take that model into the healthcare. To me, I would rather engage a person with psychosis, schizophrenia, and mental disorders, engaging them in balancing their hormones, introducing them to healthy foods, removing compatible, incompatible foods, getting them on an exercise program, surrounding them with positive, health, happy people, not locking them down with a bunch of other crazy people. And, and, and really engage this person. We've done this for people. We've actually helped them individually, you know, case by case to do this. But the same holds true, not just for mental health, instead of the hierarchy of, of Maslow, you know, first comes food and, and, and shelter and exercise, but then comes love and contribution. Someone has to be a guiding light because in health and medicine and well, wellness care, 
most people don't have the time that I've taken in 40 years to, to go down every single uh, pathway and meet with all these doctors and educators. Uh, and, and now I'm releasing a whole education program through your website. And um, I just hope the best, Alex, for you. I hope you can get this word out and uh, we can save some lives.